in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Nuff 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snubbed Up Seven. Your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. It is so wonderful to have so many out here in YouTube land and in general society, those of you who are born the descendants of slaves and you call yourself black and proud of your darkness having an emotional connection to your ancestors. You are so wonderful that we can come together on YouTube or out in uh, the public areas in this nation. And we can share our experience. We can share our knowledge. There is something that is called, let me see if I can get this quote, two heads are better than one. If I come on this channel and speak to you like I am Mr. Know-it-all, I want you to listen to me clearly. If I talk to you like I'm Mr. Know-it-all and I have the answer, then I want you to unsubscribe to me immediately because I don't. Anybody that's coming to you and they are bringing you the answer. They are the know-it-all. Then you need to unsubscribe to them. Because they don't. Because if they had the answer. To this serious problem of the black man and woman in America. We've been here in a horrid condition. Confused condition. Distorted condition. For over 400 years, if anybody had the answer, then why do we continue to suffer the way that we do? So in this case, it is even more important that not only do we have two heads are better than one, but that we initiate the thinking process of the whole 40-some million Black men and women and children that's in this nation, all of us to come together to resolve not my problem, your problem, her problem, his problem, but our problem in this nation. There is not just one person with some type of answer or solution. And it is more better that two heads are better than one. And as I have explained, it is even better that the whole 40 billion be encouraged and inspired to think for themselves. And perhaps those heads coming together might prefer what I have to say 
above of what somebody else may say. It's possible. And in this, we should not be jealous if the majority says, I think what he is bringing or what she is bringing may be our best option. But that's why I'm doing my own thing. That's why everybody's doing their own thing. And while everybody is doing their own thing, nothing is getting done. So how smart is that? You tell me. That's our reality. So anytime that you come to the reality's temple, I'm going, I'm going to bring you our reality. And it is not a reality that we follow behind one voice. Unless that in voice have embraced the voices. Do you understand what I'm saying? Unless that one voice embraces the diversity that is black people. The different mindsets that is black people. The different cultural things that we have embraced. The different ways of thinking that black people are. Not just one particular pattern of thought because that's not going to work. It's never going to work. And as long as human beings have been on this planet, it has become a failure. That is why in many cases, military force is used to control the people. Different political and religious ideas are used to control the people to try to keep them, keep the masses thinking the same. But as long as I have my mind, I will never think the way you do. And you will never think because we are all different individuals. But just like the human body made up of different individual organs, they have come together in order to form this one being. And so now we as a people, even though we are different organs, now is the time that we join together and become a fully functioning Functioning one nation, one people, one being. That was not the topic that I had chose to speak with us about. But it is also important. So in conclusion, let me bring this to our attention. Because I am, I am happy that there is a diversity of thoughts among us. It is needed because there is no doubt two heads are better than one. And so from this variety of thoughts some brothers and sisters have brought to my attention and it sounds logical that we should not debate Caucasian people about the black experience. When you tell them of our hurt and our pain and they begin to tell you crap and want to debate you whether or not you, you hurt or not then it is time to end the conversation it is time to go because that tells you they are not interested in, in your hurt and your pain how can you how can another person tell somebody else that they don't hurt if you have a headache how can I tell you that you don't hurt? Oh well, I can tell. I don't had many. Uh, I don't had many headaches myself, and you don't act like you got a headache to me. How the hell can I have the nerve to tell you whether or not you are suffering from acid reflux, you have a headache, or you itch, or anything? That's you. So how in the hell can some Caucasian come to tell me about what I? explain my hurt and my pain in this nation, how the hell can they begin to tell me I don't hurt? They don't want me to have an emotional connection to my ancestors. How can you talk about slavery? You ain't never been no slave. You ain't never been no patriot. You never fought in the Revolutionary War. But you run around and you put your hand on your heart and you talk pledge allegiance to the flag and tell us you're a patriotic American. You ain't got nothing to do with that. But you want us to feel your patriotism, but you don't want us to feel our emotionalism when it comes to our people who your patriot enslaved. That's the bottom line. 
How can a man tell a woman when she is on her menstrual cycle? Tell a woman how she's supposed to feel and how she's supposed to act. Well, I read a, I read in a book. I read in a book uh, about women's menstrual cycle. You ain't never, as a man, you ain't never been no woman. You can read all the books you want. You cannot tell no female how they're supposed to react and what they're supposed to do or what this menstrual cycle thing is about. You can't tell. You're a man. All thing you can do is read in a book. You have no experience. I would further go to say that we should not even debate dark European these Uncle Toms because their primary purpose in life is to be like a guard dog to their master. So they will defend their master. Their only reason for them to eat, even be living, is to protect. And their sole purpose is for what benefits their master. So when they see their master under attack, here these Uncle Tom Doc European niggas come. Don't debate them. But I will tell you this. Not on YouTube. Because they hide their, most of them hide behind a picture. Cowardly, yellow back things. But for those of us, when we gain a certain amount of celebrity and prestige, if you can get these cowards in the right position in the public so you can humiliate and shame and embarrass them, then that's the opportunity to take. Because I would dare a man go on any show, any public forum, and debate a woman about her menstrual cycle. You idiot. You look like a fool. You cannot tell her. You can't even begin to explain and talk about a woman and her menstrual cycle. So a, the white man, this racist Caucasian people looking for excuses for the evil of their ancestors, they can't begin to debate us about our experience in America and what we've gone through. And see, the thing about it, really, see, they don't give a damn. They don't care nothing about you. I'll give you this as a further example. There are people that are called Haji, Haji Kondra Act, something to that effect. Anyway, they are not really sick. It's a mind thing. In their mind, they believe they are sick. That's how Caucasian people want to view us. Oh, you're just a hypochondriac. Y'all ain't as bad off as you. It's a matter of choice and responsibility and all this bull that they bring us. But even so, when somebody who believes they are sick go to a doctor, the doctor do, do not make mockery of them. The doctor do not laugh at them, maybe behind their back. But a real doctor don't do that because they understand what has happened here. The doctor tries to treat the patient just like if they really were sick because the doctor has compassion and love for his patient. So even if what we was bringing was a hypochondria type act, of which it is not, but these demons don't have no love for you. These demons don't give a damn about us. They just get sick of you saying, well, the white man did this and the white man did that. And they just, ah, you never with you. Please stop. I know you ain't. I know you can do better because of this and, and because I did this and I done that. They are not like the doctor who would sit down with the patient and say, why do you feel that way? What's wrong? And blah, blah. And, you know, trying to show compassion to that person. I care. Even though I might not believe what you're talking about, I want to show you that even though whether your illness is real or whether it is in belief, I want to show you I still care about you. These demons, the Uncle Tom, the dark European, and these racist Caucasians are nothing but excuse makers because they are comfortable in this world of oppression of evil. The white people benefit from the wickedness, the wicked behaviors of their ancestors and what they do today. And the dark European has become comfortable in the evil. 
So no. I will embrace your advice and take your advice to ignore and do not debate these racist Caucasians or these dark Europeans. Let them believe and say whatever the hell they want to. We need to continue to take our energy to wake our people up. To show them this is not a hydrochondria. Did I say that correct? Hydrochondria act. This is serious business for us. And we just don't know. And we need to get to know. So continue to share information. Continue to get together and awaken our people. So that we can move forward. This is your brother Talib Kimi Ra. Thank you for listening. Let us take each other's advice. Because we are a smart people. Think for ourselves. This world. That is. The Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome once again to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry, the Angel Snub Nub 7. In fact, I am the mighty Mighty, mighty, angel step number seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Ibn Ra. Thank you for giving me another, perhaps 15 minutes of your time, because you could easily be doing something else. You don't have to give this one nothing. So, I am most humble that I will be worthy of, uh, of your uh, time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Let us, as Gladys Knight and the Pips once said in a song, let us get down to the real nitty gritty, y'all. <laughs> okay. I want to say to Caucasian people or white people or whatever, however you prefer. I don't know what other name, European, however you want to describe yourself. I understand that my words from this page, if you do not understand where I'm coming from, can upset you. Some of you don't want to understand. So my words, especially how I talk, how I roll. It really makes y'all upset. So it is no shock. It is no surprise. And you have the right. When somebody is talking about your race. Talking about white people. You have the right. Well not actually not the right on my page. But you can come talk to me. But I understand why you would want to defend your people. Your race. That, I see no problem with that. That's great. You can come here. As long as you are civil and cordial, you can come here and make your position plain and talk to me. That's all right. Some of you believe I'm stupid. Some of you think a lot of black folks are stupid. I'm not one of them. So usually, when you come to my page, Silver and Cordial, you leave. Oh, this, you want to call me a nigga. That's what you want to do. I know. See, I already know it. But see, you have, you want to paint this false picture to me. So you just call me an ignorant, dumb bitch. Just go ahead and, why don't you just say, you stupid nigga. That's what you really want to say. Or you come with some other kind. See, you want to try to, because you don't want to take this false picture that I already know you false. This false picture that you love everybody and you don't. Because if you have any love, whether you agree with me or disagree, because of that compassion and caring that you have in your heart, you can come to my page, civil, and you can, and you can leave just as civil and courteous as you can, but you can't. Because you really got hatred. The same hatred that you try to point and paint me to be is really you. It's not me. 
Because when you come here, I treat everybody nice. But you get upset because you can't get that lie off. So let me, before this time run out, let me go over one of the one of the one of the, the deceptions, the lies that they like to bring to me. They said, Brother Talik, you're so full of rage and anger and hatred. First of all, you don't you don't never show no evidence of any hatred. I have not made not one video talking about hatred of white folks. Matter of fact, I have videos and I have one particular video talking about my unjustified hatred of white people. Where is your proof? Because you don't like what I said. I have not said anything outside of the history books that white people wrote themselves. So if you if there is any anger, if there is any hatred, it's coming from the racist Caucasian American people's own history books. So don't, so don't put that on me. There's nowhere I wrote, there's nowhere on any video that I ever said that I hated white people. So get off that lie. That's a lie. And if I did hate white folks, I would tell you, I'm not scared of you. And if I did have, have white, uh, hate white folks, white people, then I will be justified because of the mistreatment that I have personally experienced as well as the mistreatment my people have suffered here in the hells of America for over 400 years. So don't bring me that goody two, goody two shoe garbage to me. Then they tell me. Martin Luther King, they, they want to try to find examples of black people that show that I'm wrong in my hatred. They want to show that there are black people that love them and try to work with them for brotherhood and sisterhood. And they use number one example, Martin Luther King Jr. Then they have the audacity to use Malcolm. So let me quickly talk about the Honorable Martin Luther King Jr. and the Honorable Brother Malcolm X. Here we go. Martin Luther King Jr. first. Martin Luther King, nonviolent person. And he did embrace certain Caucasians around him or whatever. But I don't remember, and you show me any evidence and proof where Martin Luther King said that he loved the white man. That the white man was the black man's friend. So I want to see the information myself. And then if he did, then Martin Luther King was a hypocrite because everything he did was against the white man. Every march that Martin Luther King done, was he marching against black people? Was he marching against the Japanese or the Chinese or the Native American? Every march that Martin Luther King did was against white folks. And if you listen to his speeches in its totality, you will hear him talk about the white man. But see, he's dead. And then they take these sound bites. And those who want to paint Martin Luther King a certain way, even those who control his legacy, they don't release these whole speeches because I know my grandmother had an old speech of Martin Luther King on record. And he talked about the evil white man in the South. And then when Martin Luther King went north to Chicago, he said, I have never seen an evil people like that in my life. Who was he talking about? He was talking about the white people, not the black folks, not the Asians, not the Native Americans. He was talking about the evil white folk in Chicago. And the white people in Chicago were so full of anger and hatred, they ran Martin Luther King out. He had to go back down south. But y'all want to pay me? Yes, Martin Luther King was nonviolent. But he did not never say, I love white folks like that. He said due to his religious beliefs, Love your enemies and all like that. And because of his nonviolent stance, because he's trying to work with these people 
And he slowly but surely seeing how evil and demonic they really are. And if you really study Martin Luther King, you'll notice he is beginning to turn away from that nonviolent because he understands who he's dealing with. But unfortunately, violence is what took his life at the hands of the one of one of the people of the race that y'all claim that Martin Luther King said he loved. Get out of here with that crap. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis to help black folks in the sanitation with a sanitation strike. Against who? Who was running the sanitation company in Memphis? It was all about against white people. So don't bring me that silly garbage to me. You must think I'm a damn fool. Now, Martin Luther King is like me. That's right. He's like me, and I'll get to that as soon as I deal with Malcolm. Malcolm went to Mecca. Malcolm already knew there was white Muslim. He didn't have to go to Mecca. But Malcolm went to Mecca. He said, oh, it was so beautiful. And they had the white folks. They was Muslims and everybody the brotherhood and all like that. But when Malcolm came home, Malcolm X never said. He said, that's white Muslim. And a white Muslim is my brother. But he never said, I love white people. Because Malcolm X prior to his assassination, had plans to go to the United Nations to file a complaint. A complaint against who? His new white friends? No, against this evil white man in this country. And that's something y'all need to understand. And this is where I am similar with Martin. This is where I am similar with Malcolm X. They were willing to be just and fair. And not, and not condemn a whole race. But narrow it down to a certain few. And that's what I do. And that's what I am about. Because it would be unjust and it would be unfair to condemn an entire race of people when I know that the entire race did not participate in this atrocity. That would not. And for me to do that, will make me just as bad as the ones I complain about. That's not what I'm about. But I'm not going to run around here and talk about white folks because those who are in power that's doing this is the Caucasian race. I'm not going to sit around here and talk about oh, the white man is my friend. No. I have certain Caucasian people who believe in justice willing to die for, die for it. Those are the people that, like Malcolm and like Martin, those are the type of people who are willing to die for justice, die for real equality. Those are the type. I cannot condemn them if they are doing right. How can you condemn a person if they are doing the right thing, like Spike Lee said? But see, you want to use Martin Luther King and Malcolm to continue this for us to continue to accept this slave-like condition. All of you are not our friends. Malcolm never said the white man was his friend. My, uh, Martin Luther King never did say, oh, the white man is my friend. They didn't, it's not like, that ain't how it go. The enemy, if it was not for the evil of white people, there would be no Martin Luther King. If it was not for the evil of white people, there would be no Malcolm X. If there was not for the evil, the injustice, the unfairness, the unequality behaviors of Caucasian people, I would not be here. You think that it's fun? Talking the way I do? Who in their right mind wants to talk bad and bring garbage and put garbage and speak negativity on somebody? But it's necessary because you don't like to see the man in the mirror. And instead of saying, look, there's a wrong, let us try to correct it. See, the problem is you don't give a damn about how black folks feel. You don't care about our suffering because you're comfortable. Those with a full belly don't give a damn about those who are starving. 
Because you fool. And see, so since you fool, you happy, it's all right. And then you claim you want brotherhood and sisterhood, but you got thousands of your citizens that's telling you we got a problem here, and you want to turn a blind eye, and you want to call us full of hatred. That's your excuse. Oh, y'all full of hate. It is unjust. It's, we're suffering injustice. We're not complaining for no reason. But because your belly is full and you don't see nothing wrong, you can't see the emptiness in, in other people because you really don't give a damn about us. So take that crap on and you can shove it. My time is out. This is your brother Tony Even Rob. Jot down your comments. I know y'all got a lot of say, to say on this. This was Think for ourselves, people. Don't be fooled. I'm out. In the name of my ancestors, peace, firm, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Up 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik even Raw. We only have a few minutes. The conversation is good. So on this busy, let's douse get busy. I want to send this message or this discussion, this talk to Christian black pastors, preachers, ministers, whatever you want to call yourself. Not all, because see, if you are Caucasian, Christianity belongs to you. While these pastors of Christianity, these ministers, these preachers, this was a religion that was forced on their ancestors that they have embraced the terrorism. It's simple as that. They have embraced the terrorism as their own. And for over 200 years, the black people in this nation was denied the right to read or write. You were denied the right to have religion. Understand this. But y'all preachers and y'all pastors and y'all ministers, y'all don't like talking about that. For over 200 years, you was denied the right to read and write. You, was, you don't like to bring up in all your sermons and your preaching. You don't like to talk about that you didn't have religion for over 200 years. I think it was close to 300 years somewhere. Anyway, it was a long time. We're not going to get technical. And then when you was given religion, not that you sought religion, but when you was given it to, when the slave master decided to give you religion, they did not choose Islam. They did not choose Buddhism. They gave you Christianity. And if he's your slave master, do a slave master... Look out for what is good for his slave? No. He looks out what is in the slave master's best interest. So he gave you Christianity and the way he taught Christianity so that you would become a better citizen. You were not a citizen. You and I, our people, they were slaves. And here you are in 2010 continuing to echo and preach to our people slavery. I know you don't like what I said, but that's just too bad. I don't care what good is in it. There is good in almost everything. There is good in a kitchen table. If you ate some of the table, broke it down and ate it, some, a table has nutrients and all that. It has something that's good for you if you can break it down and cause your body to digest. But... But that's not that's not that's not what meant for you. This religion called Christianity was not meant for you. It has no connection to your ancestors, but you have lost your emotional connection to your ancestors and don't even give a damn. So here you are, praise Jesus, praise the Lord, involved in Christianity, and even Jesus himself. I can guarantee you, if Jesus was here. If he was not fictional, if he was a real person, he would come to you and tell you to embrace what is you and go back to your family. Because
because you don't want to embrace that which made you a slave. And that's why you still continue to have a slave behavior. But here we are, Christian pastors and ministers, black, black faces. You represent Christianity and you, now that you have a little degree from Harvard or Yale or some school of theology or whatever, you're going to try to teach the white man his own religion. You look so dumb and you sound dumb preaching this thing and you don't even know and this, this thing was forced on you and your people. But the question in this video brings up the subject, should pastors, preachers, ministers of Christianity, should they advocate the death penalty? Should they be happy when something goes wrong uh, or when a criminal is hurt and killed during the commission of a crime? Should they be happy about Punishment to the evildoer. Now, of course, you know, I don't represent Christianity. And I am not no authority. But like in all things, we have a right to state our, our opinion. So I will state my opinion. Being an ex-Christian myself and being around Christian people. Now, Christianity... It's supposed to be painted as loving and peaceful and forgiving. Jesus himself, even though he was placed on the cross, and he did have an incident where he was angry at those who violated uh, the temple. But in my study of Christian teachings, the Jesus Christ, he never wished punishment on those who hurt him. He said, my father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He never he never wished bad tides on those who hurt him. He was a peaceful person and continued to, no matter what happened, always wish compassion and forgiveness and love even on, on those that uh, terrorized him or oppressed him. Forgive them father. For they know not what they do. So based on Jesus behavior. Himself. And I would like for you to show. References where Jesus was a violent person. Now after the return of Jesus. This shows a different side. That the preachers don't want to talk about. Because when Jesus on his return. Is not going to come back loving. He's going to come back with a sword. So that gives us a different picture or a different, a different side of the Jesus. But the Jesus that we know of and that you're trying to promote, this was a peaceful and loving person. So when you have pastors and preachers that advocate the, for the death penalty, then apparently and clearly they are not following behind Jesus Christ. Not this person in the Bible who's shown no hatred, no laughing or making mockery of the criminal being punished. He never done nothing like that. If he did, please show me and I doubt that you will. In any way, that is not how the religion should be painted where you're making mockery of another person's pain and suffering even though they did wrong because they are always have the potential and always are in the position to have forgiveness from the a higher power. But see, in religion, uh, in religion, you can do whatever you want. There's only one Bible. There's only one Quran. But you got all kinds of religion that says, I'm a Muslim. I'm a different. This all kinds of Christians, Pentecostal, Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, all kinds of Muslims, Hanafi, Sunni, followers of Elijah Muhammad, all kinds of, of folks with, using the same Bible, same Quran, coming up with different conclusions. And that's the, one, that's the number one reason why y'all should reject religion. That's for confused, distorted people that have personal agenda. Because it only started off as one. Now it's 100. So really, these pastors and preachers, you can make the religion anything that you
you want. So if you want to smoke, uh, I can find ways in the Bible where it says I can smoke cigarettes. I can manipulate the Bible and twist the words around and do so I can drink beer or fornicate, commit adultery. Or I can twist the Bible that taught against sin how I can do a little sin. It's all right in the eyes of God. So, hey, I do what I please. You can make Christianity anything, anywhere, and you'll still get your salvation. I'm still a believer. You have voluntary sin, and the sin God will approve of. So you can do anything. So you can be a preacher, and you can go to any bar, and you can be a preacher, and go to any strip club, and you can still do those things. The Lord didn't say we could not go to strip clubs and hang out in bars, did it? <laughs> you can take your religion and make it anything that you want. Anything that you want to do. That's why your time is up. That's why y'all fool. That's why slowly but surely the masses of the people are getting away from this madness because that's what it is. You have turned it into Barnum and Bailey circus. And then in the Quran itself, it says, I, Allah, am not the author of confusion. If you have over 100 different versions of what Islam is supposed to be, it is not that confusion. But see, Allah, God, is not an author of confusion. This was done by people who don't understand nothing. Because maybe they was given confusion to begin with. And you don't like that particular form of the confusion, so you make up your own confusion. Ain't that confusing? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, friends, family, associates, those under the sound of my voice, you would do yourself a good favor if you leave these religions alone in the form that they are given to you. I make reference not to say that there is not good in these religious belief systems because I make reference to different teachings from the Bible and Quran all the time. But now it's gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. And since we refuse to think for ourselves, when we come effectuated with a charismatic voice, because he looks so handsome and he's so intelligent and he speaks so uh, articulate and everything, you don't want to think for yourself. So you get caught up in confusing. You don't really know where to go. And we are people pleasers. I don't care what you think about me. But see, in the general society, if you're not part of their clique, then they look at you all wrong. And see, that's the key. If the public is accepting you, and if the government is not fighting you, then clearly you must be doing something wrong. Because Jesus and Muhammad, all of them had governments and powers against them. They was not accepted by the masses. But you are. You know why? Because you are like the masses. You are fornicators. You are adulterers. You are liars and you deceivers. You are murderers. Then, to, in, to, in conclusion, these black preachers, they want to make mockery of the criminal. Yeah, death penalty. And I'm glad to see a criminal die. A criminal. But they don't say nothing against the criminal. They are patriotic to the United States of America who murder how many black people? Who go around the earth destroying the, the planet, destroying animal life, the greatest criminal. Now, you can talk about hatred of a criminal, and then these a criminals were created by the society and the world by the criminals which are the racist Caucasian people who are in power that you refuse to say anything against because they are the ones that gave you your religion and the religion that they gave you can't fight against the devil, the criminal. You want to give an illusion that you don't like evil but and so you 
will laugh and make mockery of a criminal, but you don't do nothing against the criminals. Y'all some hypocrites. Y'all so fake. And I'm so happy that your time is almost up. You being exposed for the hypocrites and the liars and the deceivers and manipulators that you really are. Uh, y'all Negroes, dark Europeans, you should, all oh, y'all, oh man, you and your master's world is coming to an end, slowly but surely, and I'm happy. Thanks for listening, jot down your comments, y'all. Had to make that sort of quick, try to get everything in in one video. This was, and is, think for yourself, the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Number Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend. Tali, even wrong. What truly needs to happen in this place called the United States of America, a place they say and they claim is a melting pot. Did I say pot? I mean, a melting pot. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, slip of the tongue, sort of early in the morning. So excuse me if I fall over my words just a little bit. A place of great diversity of humanity. There are people from all over this planet gathered in this spot. But we're not going to speak about the diversity. We're going to speak about the relationship between the Caucasian people in power of this nation and their citizens of whom they control, of whom they guide, of whom they influence, whom they dominate, and have done so for at least 400 years. We want to talk about the relationship between the Caucasian of whom used to be the slave master and their citizens who used to be called slaves. I know for many black people that's sort of embarrassing to know that you are a child of slaves and you dress up in fancy clothes and you drive Cadillacs and navigators and you make million dollars playing basketball and rapping and maybe you are the multi-million dollar uh, CEO of some white corporation. Whatever you may be, you do, you do not want to be reminded when it's all said and done, you are a child of a slave. Well, I am sorry. That is your reality. We are the children of slaves. I don't care how you dress yourself up. I don't care how much makeup you put on yourself. I don't care how many nose jobs you get. I don't care how much you color your hair blonde. I don't care what you do to look white. I don't care what you do to be something that you're not. When it's all said and done and you will be reminded, just like the transsexual that was born a man, you are a man if you was born a woman, they will remind you, you was a woman, you was a man. So black people in America, why don't we stop trying to be somebody who will not and accept your reality? You are and I am the children of slaves. We are the descendants of slaves, no matter how you want to try to escape that reality. So go ahead and drink. So go ahead and smoke your reefer. Go ahead and do all those things. And when you sober up for those few minutes that you sober, you're still a child of a saint. I'll be waiting to remind you when you come out of your, when you come off of your high. 
But there needs to be a serious talk with white America on race relations in this nation. I cannot judge white America or Caucasian America based on the few white people that come to my channel and comment because they are just individuals. They do not represent nor have they been assigned a place to represent the Caucasian people or white people of this nation. So what they have to say means nothing to me and what they say on our video should mean nothing to us because they don't run nothing, they don't control nothing, they just can run their mouth and give individual opinion so it means nothing but there needs to be a serious talk among real black leadership i'm not talking about these uncle tom dark european type now i will not say that we should not allow them to speak they should be there but when white america speaks to black america you need to stop looking over those who are kissing you in your butt, trying not to hurt your feelings. The ones that you need to really speak to are the ones that's honest with you, speaking right in your face, telling you how they feel openly and honestly. And if they hurt your feelings, they don't give a damn. That's the one that you need to be speaking with. The ones that want to kiss you in your butt and try to compromise giving more to you than what you deserve that's what has caused and continue to cause this condition because they don't know no better in a court of law when you have one lawyer versus another lawyer they must speak to the best interest of their client these dark europeans so-called leadership with a black face they are not speaking for the hurt and the pain of those in the grassroots, those in the lower classes of our people who yearn to be, to breathe free, breathe free. Who suffer day in and day out. They are the victims of injustice day in and day out. Because unlike Senator so-and-so Negro, Congressman so-and-so Negro, they don't have a pension plan. They don't have a half a million dollar house. They don't have, they, they cannot be comfortable like Senator so and so in this oppression. These, these are the wrong ones to talk to because they are comfortable. If you really want to talk to your citizens and really know what's going on in the black community, you need to talk to the suffering, those who don't have nothing, the have not. That's the ones you need to speak with. You need to ignore those who are comfortable because those who are comfortable and their belly is full can't speak for those who are starving. So to be fair and to be just, there needs to be open and honest dialogue between those Caucasian people in power and influence with other, with those of us in the black community who truly seek and represent the suffering and the complaint of your dark citizens in this nation. There must be talk. But really, since Caucasian people and Caucasian Jews, you own the television station, you own cable, you own the mass media, if you really wanted to talk with black people about their hurt and pain, and if you really gave a damn about our suffering, you would have been able to talk a long time ago. But you really don't want to have a talk on race relations because you don't, re you don't want to be reminded that you are the children of slave owners. You are the children of those who lynch black people for no reason, rape black women for no reason. 
try and feather us, terrorize our people for over 300 years and continue to do that to this day on a covert level, not out in the open like you used to, but you use your educational system, you use your law and government to continue the slave activity that your fathers once did. And you know this, but you know the masses of our people, since they have accepted slavery as a way of life, they don't even know this because they don't know what it is to be free. Slavery is all they know. So as long as they remain quiet, why? Why talk about this is no issue. This is no issue. This is no issue because you are not hurting. So since you're not hurting, it makes no difference. And since these who are suffering really are not making an attempt to show you that they are indeed hurting or they fake. They fake. And you pacify us with a little welfare. You pacify us with a little something here and there. It is only scraps from the table of this great nation that we have given our lives. We pay our taxes, free labor for over 300 years underpaid labor for over a hundred years. The only beneficiary of this relationship are Caucasian white people. So of course, why would you want to have a serious discussion on race when everything right now, why mess up a good thing? <laughs> That's how it is. When you have two people in a marriage and one person believes that something is wrong while the other one if he's not being affected what's what you complaining about because they don't I mean they still get they still get all the benefits of the marriage while the other person feels sorrow feels grief dissatisfaction, disappointed. But you don't feel that because you lost connection, you lost the love for your spouse. And see, in this situation, you never loved black people to begin with. We were here for your self-gratification. We were here to be your labor bearers. No more, no less. We were not brought here to be your friends. We were not here to be your lovers. We were here to be tools used. And now these tools need to be thrown away, but you really don't know how to get rid of the, the tools. This is a complicated tool. And that's how we are treated in this nation, like tools. There is no love. If there was love, you would see it in the activity. We don't see the activity. We hurt. You don't feel our hurt because you don't hurt. So since you don't hurt, it's impossible for us to hurt. And you don't give a damn. You know, when you love somebody, when they hurt, even though you don't, you can feel, you can feel, you can have compassion for them. When they get sick, you, you feel sort of sick because of your love. You don't want to see them in that condition. You don't want to see your loved one hurt. You don't want to see them sick. But see, you don't love. White America does not love black people because when we cry and we tell you that we hurt and there's a problem, you look the other way. And you even got the nerve to say, y'all racist. Y'all niggers is racist. You're just like me. How am I like you? I did not enslave you. How am I like you? I never denied you the right to vote. How am I any way like you? I've done nothing to you. So when you have attitudes like that in a marriage, the only true solution, brothers and sisters, 
and I'm not going to name call or nothing like that, but I want to talk to those people, and you know who you are, that might be considered Uncle Tom, or I might consider Dark European. When you're in a relationship like that, an exploited and abusive relationship, come on now. It is time, if you are in your right mind, it is time to talk about divorce. Divorce. Hold on, go on to the video number two, I believe. Yes. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry, YouTube username. I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Sally Even Rock. I do not know exactly how I wish to present this message to us, but it is important that it be given. So please, see, I'm starting already. So please, excuse me if I fumble a little bit. But I need to talk to us on this very important topic. I would like to begin by saying, if you like living in La La Land. What do you mean by La La Land? If you come to my channel looking to feed your self-righteousness, if you are pro-black and you want to hear me talk about, oh, the white man did this and the white man did that, then I suggest that you unsubscribe and you need to go somewhere else. If you are here to hear me talk about anti-religion or this and that, these particular subjects, anti-male or anti-woman, anti-whatever, then you need to leave this channel because I'm not about la-la land. I'm about taking us into reality. And the reality is nobody, listen to me, Nobody is innocent of anything. Everybody has problems. But y'all like to go to channels where somebody is going off on somebody else. And you like that because it makes you feel better about your righty, unrighteous self. The Bible says these two things. The Bible says all, not me, not you, not she, not he, not those, not them, all have fallen short of the glory of God. So that means everybody got some kind of raggedy problem. All of you are messed up. So why are you talking about what well, white people do this and white people do that? You messed up too. And Caucasian, while you point your finger saying this and that and out of all the people, now, according to your history, you really messed up. So you really need to shut your damn mouth and listen to folks. But y'all, all of you are self-righteous. But the Bible tells you, and you go to church every Sunday or Saturday or Wednesday, whenever you go, and you know these religious teachings, that all, not some, all have fallen short the glory of God. But y'all point fingers like you goody two shoes, like you perfect. Then when you come here and I bring you your reality and beat the hell out of you, you can't handle the real truth. So you start crying like a baby. Oh, I don't like what you say, Dali. You mean, and then you go somewhere where somebody can feed your nasty and foul egotistical self-righteous ego so if you think that's what I'm about then you need to unsubscribe 
because all have fallen short the glory of God. It also said that your uh, righteousness is as rags in the sight of God. So you got a problem here that you need to work on. Not some people have problems and you perfect. All, everybody has a problem. That's why nobody is fit to judge except God. Brother Talik, you don't believe in God. Why are you saying these things? I believe in the real truth. I believe that which is correct. And there's nothing wrong with what I just said because it's accurate and it's true. Everybody here has problems. Everybody here is not perfect. All have fallen short. The glory of God or however you want to put it. You don't even have to say God in it. You all have fallen short. Period. Everybody has problems. So if you want to live in la la land. Your fantasy world. Where you so self righteous. And you got it going on. Then I suggest that you leave this house. Because sooner or later. While you cheering. Go brother Talit. Go. Talk about them devils. Talk about them Negroes. Talk about them women. Talk about them men. Sooner or later. In this house of reality. Sooner or later. It's going to be your turn. And you're not going to like what is being said. Because in this house. I am the man in the mirror. To show you what you really look like. Not just you. But the house shows myself. What I really look like. And some of us are monsters. And you know it. Pretending to be an angel and you're not. So you want to get away from those who show you the man in the mirror. Because you don't want to accept the responsibility of being the monster that you really are. And you're a monster because you have fallen short of the glory of God. And instead of trying to correct that which is an error, you try to justify your actions and keep rolling on. So that is why humanity is in the condition that is in because it has created these problems and situations and refused to accept the responsibility of their actions and the problems and the error continue to grow instead of being solved, resolved, and done with. But when we come to this house that I call the reality's temple, then the object is for us to recognize that we have fallen short. Understand our error, correct that error, so that we can move on. So if there is a God, if there is an Allah, that we may begin to look good in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Now, we cannot judge, lest ye be judged. I am not above being judged. And I'm not so low that I cannot also judge. But some of us are in positions where we might know what we're talking about. A criminal who is a rapist, a robber, and a murderer, lying and deceiver, you don't have room to be really talking about somebody else. You are really in what they say, the little kids say, you really in deep doo-doo. How the hell are you going to judge and talk about somebody? You just got too much. You just have too much stuff going on with you. You have a lot of work to do. But Brother Talik is in a position. And it's not being arrogant. It's not being egotistical. But I don't have that kind of blood on my hands. When I was a child, 
when I was a child, I've done dumb things because as a child, you're just so ignorant. I did not have the proper mother. I did not have the proper father. I did not have the proper spiritual guidance. And I was a child. So when you are a child, you don't, you lack certain maturity. You lack certain experience. So you end up doing dumb things. So as a child, I stole. As a child, I was a liar. As a child, I did dumb things that I shouldn't have been doing. But as you grow up, but as a adult male, as an adult man, as a mature human being, they say after 18 years old, after 18 years old, when I was considered grown, I began to put childish things aside. I have never been a smoker. I have never been a user of drugs, legal or illegal. I don't like drugs, period. I have never been a whoremonger. There's a lot of these things that y'all experience I've never been. And if you compare me to a lot of you, I'm almost as clean as the driven snow. But I'm not because all have fallen short of the glory of God. I've fallen short in other ways. But some of y'all really dropped off the wagon. So when I talk to you, I can talk because I don't have all that on my back. You a whore. Where well, you were, maybe you still are. You a pimp, prostitute, drunkard, dope fiend. Some righteous in the church think you all that, and you haven't, and you haven't an affair with the preacher. Y'all all messed up. You hate white people for no real reason. You hate black people for no real reason. Y'all all screwed up. So, another screwed up person, and you know they are screwed up, they are not in the position to judge you because the first thing you're going to do is point their sin. But see, I can talk because you ain't got all that. You, you don't have all that with me. So I can talk about it. I can tell you because I did not fall into the trap that apparently you have. But all have fallen short. The glory of God. But in my having the strength to avoid those traps. Then I can share an experience. I can share a word that can help us. Not to make mockery of you. Not to make fun of you. Not to say, oh Talik, you so great because you ain't a whoremonger and you don't drink and you don't smoke because I'm not better than you. But to give us a word, to give us a message to inspire and to encourage so that we may become the great person that we have the potential to be. Because as your brother, I want what is best for you. Just like if you're my brother or my sister, you want what is best for me. And I want what is best for us. And we should want what is best for all of humanity so that all humanity cannot fall short the glory of God, but all humanity can reach their potential and be the great and beautiful life form that we really are. We are not these evil dope fiends and greedy and right and self-righteous, arrogant, and the list can go on and on. That's not really who we are. Our natures have been corrupt. But now it is time for us to go, as they say in the Quran, Allah is guiding us on the right path. That's what the time has called for. For us to go and become righteous. And it is a joyous and wonderful thing. 
I am so happy to be used by the creation for this most wonderful moment in the history of the human being. It is lovely. But now that I have gotten that off my chest, I need to speak about what the topic of this video series is about. And it is about the white. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik IBNRAD.